Namaste, welcome my friends. Thank you so much for joining me today. We're going to focus on low back pain. So we're going to do some stretches, to yoga practice to stretch out the muscles in the back pain as well as strengthen these. Um, for the practice, you won't need any kind of props. However, if you feel like you can use a bolster or a blanket for the final portion of the class for Shavasana, Please go ahead and grab it and I will meet you on your mat. So initially, as you come onto your mat, please go ahead and just uh, sit tall. We're gonna have your hands right behind you. So it's just almost like you were just kind of kicking back on a beach somewhere and looking out at the ocean. And then drop your knees over to the left as you bring the right knee, the inside edge of your right knee down. And pause here for a moment. Maybe you want to come down on that left, left elbow, maybe the right elbow. And just stay here for just a moment. Just kind of stretch out. Uh, well, initially just notice what's happening in the low back. Take a nice deep breath in. If this is too much, you can always come back upon your hands. And then take your knees over to the right. So the inside edge of the left knee comes down. Maybe you want to just stay up here. Maybe you want to come down on your right elbow. Maybe you want to come down on both elbows. See what works best for you. And just breathe into whatever it is that you're feeling. Take a nice deep breath in, exhale. And then come back on your hands once again. Lean back a little bit more and take your right ankle on top of the left knee. And maybe this is how far you want to stay. Maybe if you want to make it a little bit deeper stretch for that right hip. See if you want to press yourself up, press your torso up a little bit closer to your right shin. If that's easy enough for you, you can bring your left heel a little bit closer to your bum. That increases the stretch on that right hip. And then really try and sit tall. So I'm using my hands to lift my chest up i'm pressing my hands down lifting the chest up keep that right foot flex that will protect your right knee and then just kind of wag the legs a little bit side to side notice if you go over to the left you might feel a little bit more stretch in that right hip or right low back if at any point this bothers your knees feel free to extend that left leg away from the hip or you can lean back a little bit more. But whatever, wherever you are, just make sure that right foot is flexed. Close your eyes. Take a nice deep breath into that right hip. Exhale it out. And then walk your hands back a little bit more. Bring your elbows down on the floor. And just stay here for just a moment. And then drop the outside edge of your left thigh down so that Right, bottom of your right foot is on the floor. You can stay here on your elbows or you can come all the way down to the floor. Take your left hand on the inside of that right knee as you press the knee open. So if you notice my right knee is vertical up towards the ceiling, my right foot is flat on the floor and I'm pressing, I'm actively pressing my left knee onto my right ankle. So you definitely want to use that traction between the right ankle and the top of the left thigh. And then as you stay here for just a moment, close your eyes. Take a nice deep breath into your belly and the low back. Just noticing that this moment right now is the most precious moment. So whatever comes through your mind, just allow it to pass through anything that happened before class. Just notice if there's a, any kind of brush or vented, uh, vestiges to be here, maybe a little bit of leftover of your conversations earlier today, or even a little, little rush on what needs to happen after the class. Can you let them just put them on a shelf, put everything on a shelf outside your room, and just 
come inside the room with no expectations, no past, no future. I know it's easier said than done, but just notice if you can just do that even for one moment, just one minute at a time. And then gently begin to press yourself up, so really slowly, come on up, and then unwind your legs, take that right foot flat on the floor, you can winch your way for your knees side to side. And as you're ready, take the left ankle on top of the right knee. So initially, I'm just leaning back. And then I'm going to play with it a little bit. I want to see if I want to sit taller. And maybe that's just enough for me today. Maybe I want to bring my right heel a little bit closer to, you, to my buttocks. And then maybe I'm just going to just kind of wag my foot side to side, my knee and see how that feels. Maybe I'll go over to my right a little bit and notice, oh yeah, I, do, I definitely feel this a little bit more in my left hip. And then I definitely want to flex my left foot. And as I flex my left foot, I'm sitting tall, chest is lifted, I can close my eyes here and just let the pose do the work. Between really the the science of yoga is just the connection of what it feels to be in that pose. So really the nuance of the pose and then your breath. So can you bridge your breath with the pose and then just notice what's happening in that bridge. The mental stuff comes in on that bridge. You may feel like there's a lot of commentary, you know, the body is like, oh, I don't want to be here that long, or I want this to be over, or, you know, oh, it feels, what, even if it's positive, it just, can you just kind of let the breath and the pose connect without any mediation, <laughs> without anything in between? And then drop the outside edge of that right knee down. Let the left foot come on the floor so my left is, hip is picking up. Maybe you want to stay here. Maybe you want to come down on your elbows. And then, or maybe you want to come all the way down on the floor. So the left knee is lifted up towards the ceiling. The bottom of the left foot is flat on the floor. I'm actively pressing my right thigh to the outside of my left ankle and the left ankle into my thigh. And then I can use my right hand and just gently guide that left knee open. And close your eyes again. Nice deep breath here. Exhale. Notice what happens in between inhalation and exhalation. Just those little transitions, just teeny tiny little transitions at the moment where your inhales end, and then the exhales begin. Notice that millisecond. And then notice the second, the exhales end and the inhales begin. Notice the second a thought enters. little minutia, these teeny tiny little moments that we all overlook. And then as you're ready, just stay on your back, extend. So if you're seated, go ahead and come all the way on your back and then just extend the legs out into a little mini Shavasana. Let the palms be open towards the ceiling. Extend the legs out. And then draw both knees towards your chest, one knee at a time. Your hands are going to go on top of your kneecaps. Now take your knees over to the left and then press them away and towards the back wall and then over to the right and bring the knees to your chest. So we're going to do like these little circles with the hips. Taking them over to the left, extend the arms straight, over to the right and then to your, to your chest. And just 
doing small circles or large circles, entirely up to you. So I'll take them all the way around and then reverse them. So bring it out to the left, go into your chest, out to the right, and then extend it away. And to the left, and to your chest. I just got myself a little adjustment to the right and extend it out and to the left and to the center, to the right and extend it out and then put your feet flat on the floor. So imagine you have a little cloth underneath your sacrum. You're gonna, your tailbone is number six and the uh, the sacrum, the top of your sacrum is number uh, 12. So go around the clock, so press number 12 down, which means your tailbone is gonna come up, your low back is pressing down, and then you're gonna go over to number one and number two. So my right hip is lifting as I'm pressing down towards my number three, which is the outside of my left hip, then number four, number five. Now as I come around to number six, my tailbone is pressing down and I have a little arch on my low back. So number 12 is lifting. And then I'm gonna go over number seven, number eight, number nine. Now my right side of my hip is pressing down as my left hip is lifting. And then number 10, number 11, and back to number 12. So now my tail is lifting again, my low back is pressing down. So go all the way around the clock two more times and make sure you don't miss any numbers all the way around and then number 12 and one, two, three, four, five, six. Tailbone is pressing down seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and low back is pressing down. Now they go the opposite direction. So count across. Eleven. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, tailbone is pressing down, and 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1, and 12, low back is pressing, tailbone is lifted, and 2 more times, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, one and 12, and last one, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and 12. Very nice. Bring your knees to your chest. Extend both legs straight up towards the sky, and then keep the legs vertical. So point your toes. Now I'm going to ask you to put your hands right next to your hips and then just engage the low belly, your transverse abdominal muscles, and lift the toes straight up towards the ceiling and lower down. So my hips are coming up maybe an inch off the ground. It's not a huge movement. Press the hands down, lift the hips up and lower down. Try and go straight up towards the ceiling as opposed to toes coming towards your forehead. So straight up, lift, and lower. Straight up, lift, and lower. Straight up, lift, strong legs, and lower. Straight up, press, and lower. Imagine the ceiling is on your toes and you're just lifting straight up. And press the ceiling away, and lower. And press it up, and lower three more. Press. So the hips are coming off the ground just a little bit. It doesn't even have to, have to be that high. And last one, very nice. Bend the knees, bring the knees to your chest. Rock a little bit side to side on your back. And then roll over to one side and you're just gonna come to a seat, please. Take that left knee in front, left shin in front. Take the right leg back behind you. And as you pause here for a moment, so we're in 90, 90, 90 degrees in the front knee, 90 degrees in the back knee. Lean back a little bit more. Feel that nice stretch all the way in the quadricep from the IT band throughout the um, front, the muscle of that right thigh. And then extend the left leg straight. Good, pause here for a moment. 
Now you're gonna slowly begin to lift that right knee up towards the ceiling. Stretch it out nice and slowly. Go as far as you can, putting the right foot flat on the floor and then slowly begin to lower that knee back down. And slowly begin to lift the knee up and then lower the knee down. Good. Let that right knee come up off the ground and then the right knee comes all the way down and then pause here and as you pause here bend the left knee again bring that right knee on top of the left knee sit tall and stretch up your left side mermaid pose inhale coming all the way back to the center put your feet flat on the floor drop your knees to the right so the right chin is facing forward the left foot back behind you and then just initially lean back a little bit so you just want to feel that nice stretch in the quadricep and press that left knee down as much as you can stretching out the IT band the quadricep the hip flexors on that left knee sometimes the low back pain is caused by a tight um, psoas muscle so we're really trying to get into deep into the psoas muscle and if you're not familiar with the psoas muscle it originates in the lumbar spine it comes through the legs and it connects to the lesser trochanter of the femur bone so it's a short muscle but it could get really contracted and when it gets contracted it's pulling on your low back so this is a really good way of stretching that uh, muscle it's not really a, a, I like the other muscles. For example, we can contract the bicep. You can actually see the bicep and you have full autonomy. You can stretch it out or contract it. The psoas muscle doesn't work that way. Um, it's very difficult to um, think about contracting the psoas muscle. So it, it works slightly different from the other muscles. And then extend the right leg straight. Now, as you so begin to lift the knee up, so the knee and the toes are pointing the same direction, make sure you go slow so you're not tweaking the knee. And then lower that knee back down towards the floor and lift it back up, nice and slow, and lower it down. And one last time, lift it back up, nice and slow, extend that knee up, and lower it all the way down to the floor extend both legs in front draw the knees to your chest put your feet flat on the floor and then you're going to just lift your hips up into forward fold so come to the top of your mat if you aren't already there keep the knees bent and then then you can grab opposite elbows just let the head get really heavy and sway your torso side to side let the weight of your head just pull your torso down towards the mat. Swaying side to side, shake your head side to side, maybe nod your head yes and no. And then putting the hands flat on the floor, take the left leg back behind you and bring the left knee down to the floor. Walk your hands to the left side of your mat as you lean over to the right side, maybe if it feels good, you can bring the elbows down onto the floor, but make sure that left knee is supported. So if you feel like you need to put a blanket under the left knee, feel free to do that, or just stay up on top of your hands. So I wanna really lean onto that right side, inhale. Coming all the way back to the center, put the left hand on the inside of the right foot. Take your right hand to your right hip. Inhale, lengthen the spine and exhale and twist over to the right. Inhale, reach the right arm up towards the ceiling. Shoulders are away from the ears. Soften the uh, shoulder blades down. Maybe take your gaze up to your right fingertips and exhale, lower the right hand down and take your hips all the way back to your left heel. Flex the right toes, 
Inhale, lift the chest up. Exhale, fold over your right leg for half split. Pause here for a moment. Lift the hips up. So try not to sit on your heels. In fact, you may need to extend the leg, uh, the, the width the, between your right heel and the left knee a little bit farther away from each other. So move that right hip back as you flex the right toes towards your right shin. Inhale, lift the chest once again, and exhale and fold forward. Deep stretch in that hamstring. So we really want to get the hamstring nice and loose and flexible in this practice. Now walk your hands to the outside of the right foot. So both hands are on the outside of the right leg. Inhale, you lift and exhale and fold forward. Let the head drop. Move that right hip back behind you. Walk your hands back to the center, lower the right toes down, come back into your lunge, and then just step the left foot next to the right foot. Inhaling, halfway up, exhale, and fold forward, and step the right foot back behind you, right knee comes down to the floor. Walk your hands to the right side of the mat as you lean your hips over to the left. You can come down on your elbows if that feels good on your lower back, drop the head down. Take a nice deep breath here. Exhale it out. And then walk your hands back to the center, please, and take your hips to your right heel. As you flex the left toes, move that left hip back. I'm going to put my hand on my left hip and just guide that left hip back. Let the left toes come towards the shin. Inhale, lift the chest up, exhale, and fold over your left leg. Half split, Ardha Hanumanasana. Feel that nice stretch in the calf and the Achilles tendon and your hamstring. And then walk your hands over to the outside of the left leg. So on the left side of your mat, flex the foot once again, and exhale and fold. So you really want to move that left hip back. The more you move the left hip back in space, the deeper that stretches behind from the posterior chain of your left leg. Inhale, come back to the center, and just simply take that left leg back behind you. Come down on your left knees, left knee. Come down on your elbows, please. So the inside edges of your feet, uh, your uh, forearms are pressing down. Your finger, uh, your hands are spread. Your fingers are spread, you're pressing your hands down. Inhale, lift the chest up. We're going to do some cat-cows in our forearms. Exhale, pull the belly around the back, drop the head in between the hands. Inhale, lift the chest up as you send the tailbone up. Exhale, into your cat pose as you really round the low back. Inhale, come into your cat pose. Lift the chest up, tailbone goes up. Exhale, come into your cat pose. And then last one, inhale and exhale. And then tuck your toes under, lean your hips back now. Come into this version of child's pose with your toes tucked under. As you come in here, I want you to see if you can lengthen the arms. So pick up the uh, elbows off your mat and really press strongly your hands down on your mat so your hips are moving back towards your heels. As you do that, you can slowly begin to walk your hands a little bit closer to your knees and then lift and hover the knees off the ground. And then lift the hips up into downward facing dog. So spread your feet a little bit wider and then we're going to kind of move through that pose again. Walk your hands to the top of your mat so you're coming into regular down dog. Your heels are off the ground, your knees are bent. Now bend the knees a little bit deeper as you lean your hips back. And then almost like you're a frog and you're trying to jump forward, but you're not going to jump forward. You're just going to come to top of the push-up. Inhale. Exhale. Keep bend the knees, lean your hips back. Bend the knees as deep as you can. Exhale, come to top of the push-up. So it's almost like you're going to hop forward, but you're not. All you're doing is lengthening the spine. 
Bend the knees as deep as you can and exhale, come to top of the push-up. Let's just do this two more times. Inhale, take your hips back, bend the knees, really initiate the movement from your belly. Exhale, keep that belly engaged as you round the back, come forward to top of the push-up. Last one, inhaling. Bending the knees as deep as you can. Take your hips all the way back, but you're gonna hop. And then exhale, pull the belly and come into top of the push-up. And then slowly begin to walk your feet to your hands. Inhale, lengthen the spine halfway up. Exhale and fold forward. Bend the knees deep. Bring your hands to your hips and slowly begin to roll up one vertebrae at a time. Keep the knees bent the whole time. Inhaling. Reach the right arm up. Exhale. Bend the knees and reach the right arm forward as your left fingertips reach back behind you. Inhale. Pick up the right arm. Reach both arms up. Exhale. Lower the left arm in front. Right arm swings back behind you. Bend the knees deep. And move back and forth like this, inhaling, reach both arms up, exhale, right arm forward, bend the knees, left arm back. Inhale, right arm, both arms up, exhale, right arm back, left arm forward as you bend the knees. Inhaling, reach, exhaling, swing the left arm back. Inhale, reach, exhale, swing the right arm back. Couple more times. Maybe you can just speed it up just a little bit. But we're not trying to get sloppy. We want to put a little bit of a movement into it. So inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale. Inhale, exhale. Last one. Inhale, exhale, and inhale. And exhale, and then hold here, swing both arms back behind you into airplane pose. Shoulders are soft away from the ears, and then lower the hips down into Malasana, garland pose. So if your heels are way off the ground, slide a blanket or roll up your um, mat underneath your heels, or you can always sit on a block. For this one, I'm going to have you bring your feet together and knees together. So it's going, to, it's going to look like this. Knees together, feet together. There's a couple different ways of doing malasana. Sometimes it's legs apart. But this time we're going to have feet and knees together. Your triceps are going to rest on top of your knees. Bring your, forearm, uh, your uh, thumbs to your forehead and lean the third eye onto your thumbs. And then close your eyes. Again, make sure that you can stay here for just three minutes. So either heels are on a blanket or you're sitting on your block. And then we're going to close our eyes and stay here for two minutes. Take a nice deep breath in. Let the shoulders be soft. This is one of the best ways to stretch out all those tight muscles in the low back. Exhale it out. Send your breath all the way down to your low back and then as you exhale feel that the as if the, your breath is actually massaging the ql muscles on your low back all the multipedis muscles in between the vertebrae take a nice deep breath in exhale maybe you like to exhale out of an open mouth Couple more times, inhale, exhale. Nice deep inhalation through the nose. Feel and sense your breath traveling all the way down your spine to your low back. And as you exhale, empty the lungs, empty the belly. Just let the breath go through and open up. One more minute, so close your eyes and just enjoy this last minute here. Remember all the commentary, all the thoughts in between your breath and 
your the pose just let them be next by the side almost like you're going to just leave everything on the shelf outside the door there's no need to carry them with you they come and go as they please so be kind of welcoming whatever thoughts whatever commentary come but then see if you can not get attached to them or not reject them one more time, nice deep inhale. And exhale. And then sit all the way down, please. And extend the right leg forward. Bring the left knee to your chest. And then take your um, left hand behind you. Inhale, reach the right arm up. Hug your left knee. So we're going to stay here for just a moment. Press your right heel down strong strong the right leg the right leg is straight and then you're lifting the chest up your left sit bone is grounded make sure you're not leaning over to one side or another so both sit bones are lit, are sitting on the on the mat and you're just kind of twisting over to the left now hold here for a moment if this feels good stay if you like to, you can take that right, left, right elbow on the outside of the left knee, but make sure that your shoulders are soft and you can sit tall. Your palm of your hand is open to the side. This is a mudra called Abhaya Mudra. It means fear not. Just a yoga class. We're just here to enjoy moving in our bodies. Take a nice deep breath in, exhale. And then unwind and let that left knee open out to the left. Now, take your hands to your uh, ribs as you turn your torso over to the left. Reach both arms towards your right leg. Towards your right, excuse me. Reach both arms towards your right leg. Inhale. And exhale. Begin to reach towards the right toes, but your hands don't necessarily need to touch the right toes. Come back up again. Inhale. Reach up exhale kind of fold forward but keep the spine long inhaling reach exhaling fold and then wherever you end up before rounding your back so make sure your spine is long you can drop the hands down now press the hands down on your mat as you lift the chest up keep that right leg really strong and powerful press through the right heel my toes are um, flex towards my right shin and I'm sending my tailbone back behind you. One more deep breath here. Exhale. And then now you can fold forward as much as you like to drop the head down towards your shin. Maybe you can grab your ankle. Maybe you can grab your foot. If uh, some of you may be able to even kind of thread your fingertips in between your toes. That always feels good to wake up all the toes. Take a nice deep breath in. Exhale, let the shoulders move away from the ears. And then slowly begin to lift the chest up. Extend the left leg straight. Right knee comes to your chest. Take the right hand next to you. Reach the left arm up. So stretch out the left side first and then hug your right knee in. Keep that left leg straight, pressing the left heel down, toes are pointing towards your shin, and then twist to your right. Let the shoulders stay away from the ears. If this feels good, stay here. Maybe you like to take that left elbow on the outside of the right knee, and if you do, press the right knee onto your elbow, elbow into the knee to create a traction that's going to help you twist a little bit more, but not mandatory. Your palm is open, press, uh, facing the side wall into Abhaya Mudra. Keep the spine long and you're twisting on, your, on the axis of your spine. Your left leg is really strong, you're pressing down. Inhale and then exhale and unwind. Let that right knee drop down to the right. Reach both arms up, inhale and exhale. Begin to reach towards your left toes without rounding the back. Inhaling, come on up. 
and exhale and reach. One more time, inhale, you lift the arms up, exhale and reach, hold it here, and then drop the hands down. Wherever you ha your hands drop, just stay here, press the mat away as you're sending the tail back behind you. <clears throat> Flex the left toes towards your left shin, inhale, and exhale. Two more times, inhaling, really squeeze that quadricep, exhale. Contract the muscles of the thigh bone, thighs, <coughs> excuse me, exhale. Last one, inhale and exhale. And then now you can fold forward, you can round the back as much as you like to, bring in the forehead towards your shin. Still though, try and send your tailbone back towards the back wall. So you don't really want the tailbone to be tucked under. That's going to create all kinds of issues for the pelvis. So send the tailbone back as you bring the forehead down. Take one more deep breath here. This, this should feel really good on the low back, especially those QL muscles on the sides of your spine and low back. One more deep breath in. And exhale, and then pressing yourself all the way back up. Bring the soles of your feet together, sit tall. Extend your legs a little bit, your heels a little bit away from the groin. We're gonna do a, a kind of a different version of Baddha Konasana or Baddha Fly Pose. So this, this one, we're gonna round forward. Usually I have you keep your spine long to come forward. This time I want you to take a breath in and then exhale and just begin to round forward. As you round forward, you can stack your, make it um, kind of soft fist and stack your forehead on top of your fist. And close your eyes. If you're not touching your foot or your hands, you can just stay here, but let the head drop wherever you are, as far as you can go or you would like to go. Let the head drop so you feel a nice stretch all the way from the back of your neck, the occiput to down to your upper back and low back, and all the way down to your, the base of your spine. Close your eyes again. Nice deep inhalation and exhale. One more time, inhaling and exhaling. And then gently press yourself all the way up. Put your feet flat on the floor and come all the way down on your back. As you come on your back, take that right ankle on top of the left knee. Bring the left knee to your chest. Figure four on your back. Interlace the fingers behind the left hamstring. You can rock it over side to side. And then go over to the left just a little bit. And as you do, you're gonna feel that maybe a little bit more on that right hip, stay here. Good. And then again, we're gonna do what we did at the beginning of the class. So bring the bottom of your foot, bring your right foot on the floor. You can hang on to that right ankle and press the left knee on top onto the outside of the right ankle and open up that right knee up towards the ceiling. Now, we're gonna go one step farther, which is to take that right ankle and put it on the inside of the left knee, and then see if you can actually open that right hip up a little bit more. So, you only go as far as it feels good, but the, my right ankle is on the inside of my left knee, and the right knee is splayed open, and I feel a nice stretch in that IT band on the right side and the right hip. Deep breath into that space, and then slowly bring that leg back up. Bring the knees up to your chest, rock a little bit side to side. Put the right foot flat, left ankle on top of the right knee. 
Bring the knee to your chest, interlace the fingers around the right hamstring. Rock a little bit side to side, go over to the left, to the right just a little bit. See if you notice more stretch in that left hip. And then as you're ready, go all the way over to the right. Put the bottom of the left foot on the floor. So initially, your left knee is lifting towards the uh, ceiling. And then as you're ready, you can bring that left ankle on top of the right knee and see if you want to let that left knee stay open. Just a deeper stretch. Deeper doesn't necessarily mean better all the time. This means deeper, a little bit different. Breathe into whatever it is you're feeling in that hip. And then slowly come back to the center. One more squeeze. Hug your knees and give them a tight squeeze. And as you're ready, extend your legs out and come into your sweet Shavasana, final pose. Again, if you like to, you can uh, roll up a blanket, put it on your knees, turn your palms open towards the ceiling, let the back of your head rest comfortably on the floor. It, it feels really good to ha actually have something under your knees. So maybe you can put some blocks or a bol bolster or rolled up blanket or something under your knees. Let the eyes sink into the sockets. Let the forehead be smooth. Cheeks are soft. Tongue is heavy. Let your whole entire head just melt towards the floor. Let your hips be smooth. And then just close your eyes and let your body rest for just a moment. someone that you love, someone close to you that you don't have a complicated relationship with, someone that is easy to talk to, someone you respect and love genuinely. Notice their face. It could be your pet. It could be anything, really anyone. you notice their face and see their face smiling at you. Notice what that does to your body. Just looking at them smile brings a smile to your own face. Maybe, maybe just allow a slight smile to come into your face. Visualizing their image. And as you visualize their image, notice all the good feelings that spread through your body as you see their face. You may feel joy, you may feel love circulating in your body, you may feel a sense of like you would do anything for this person, you may feel a sense of giving and generosity and sharing. And then you can let the image of that person go and hold on to that feeling of love and generosity and kindness. We need so much of that in our lives. 
So please, as you're ready, gently begin to bring your knees to your chest, rock it a little bit side to side, roll over to one side and then press yourself to a comfortable seat, bringing your hands to your heart center. We all have love within us. We all have generosity and kindness and compassion within us. Let's share it with everyone else. And let's send a prayer for all of our brothers and sisters who may be suffering in this moment. May everyone know peace. May all beings know love. May all beings live with ease. Thank you so much for allowing to guide you through your practice. Have a beautiful day. Namaste.